Hi, I'm Greg. And I'm Derek. Welcome to Men of the Den, and this is Monday. Welcome to the Den, everybody. It's another week here on the Den, and this week is going to be movie review week. So what is happening is all of the Den boys have picked movies for the other Den boys to watch and then review. For example, what's happening is Spencer has picked one movie for us, and we're going on to Phil. Phil's picking for Aaron's, and you get the drift from there. Now, Spencer gave us the movie Buffalo 66. Now, before we go into that, Greg has a few words. I was taking a look at the subscriber base on YouTube today, and we broke 900, which is amazing and makes all of us Den Boys very happy that we have 900 subscribers on YouTube now. 902 to be exact. So, now is the time we need to start thinking about what are we going to do at 1,000? What do you guys want to see from the Den Boys when we inevitably hit 1,000 subscribers? Start sending in your suggestions, commenting on the Facebook page, on the YouTube videos, and when, and when it happens... The answer is not X2. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Spencer is not going to bottom for 1,000 subscribers, no. so don't make that suggestion. <laughs> but bottom line is we want to hear what you guys have to say about what you think we should do at 1,000 subscribers, and... We're going to hashtag this. It's going to be Den Road to a Thousand. Hashtag. Hashtag. So watch out for that hashtag. Pass it around. Let's get, let's get the YouTube subscriber base up to a thousand so we can have a big celebration. All right. Now to the topic at hand. Derek, what did you think of Buffalo? Well, why don't you explain briefly what Buffalo 66 is about? All right. So basically... It's a movie written by, uh, the screenplay itself was done by Vincent Gallo, also starring Christina Ricci, Angelica Houston, uh, Kevin Pollock, uh, Rosanna Arquette, and there's a few other familiar faces in there. It's about a guy who, freshly out of jail, was framed, uh, was he framed? He was, he was wrongly put in jail for a crime that he did not commit for yeah. five years. Right. And he's coming back in, his parents don't know, well, as far as he knows, his parents don't know about his jail time. Mm -hmm. And he's made him. He's made up a life to make his parents happy for him. So basically, what he's trying to do to please his parents, he's trying to create his own life. Wherein has he tells them that he's married. He ends up kidnapping somebody to, who ends up pretending to be his girlfriend, which ends up. Let, eh. Leave it at that. Let's yeah. not <laughs> blow the whole movie for people. But that's the basic storyline to give you a brief overview of what the movie is about. So it's yeah. it's essentially what happens when he kidnaps the girl to pass off as a girlfriend to the parents, and the hilarity ensues. I don't know. I <laughs> right. had different opinions when it came to this movie. Mm -hmm. Myself, I'm, in, I'm a fan of our house. I'm a fan of low budget. I thought this was a brilliant movie. Mm -hmm. um, I love the kind of old school graphics. Like, you'd see, like, a screen. When he, when Vincent Gallo's character, Billy, had a, had a, had a, had a thought from before. It was like the screen would come up with that, would just come up, fill the screen with that memory and would just kind of come back and show, or have real life, and show kind of his, his psychosis and what, and how his emotions at that time towards, towards the conversation. You mean psychosis, not psychosis. Yeah, just correct me. Um, <laughs> Greg, you want to put, it, put anything there? All right. So for me, the movie was, I mean, very well done. The... Obviously, the list of actors in the movie, how could it not be a pretty, at least a good movie? Mm. Um, the storyline was very dark, but had elements of comedy in there, um, which is usually the kind of movie I like. However, this movie, I, I don't know. I, I got to the end of the movie leaving, left with the feeling, did I like the movie or didn't I like the movie? I think the whole point of the movie was to kind of make you feel uneasy. Because, well... There's like there's questions like Christina Ricci played the girlfriend, and the whole time being like you're wondering like why didn't she protest uh, about the whole thing? Don't about the give away the movie though. No, <laughs> there's a one moment. There's one scene in particular. It's when they're in a photo booth and he's trying to portray he's trying to pr portray them as a happy couple. You see them bickering back and forth, and you can see the emotion of her her, her disdain and her confusion and wondering why she stayed, but. Then you just see it come to the happy face and everything just feels real at that point. And it's just like one of those things when you see 
how good the acting actually was in yeah. the movie. It was, it, I mean, no doubt the, mo- the acting in the movie was really good. And the fact that I didn't know whether I liked the movie probably was a good thing because it kept me thinking about the movie probably for the, the last day and a half since we watched it. Yeah. So for that fact, I'll say at least it's one of the movies that keeps you thinking. Yeah. Was I a huge fan of it? No, it's not, definitely not one of my favorite movies, but I probably will go back and watch it again just to... Form, form a finalized opinion. I'd definitely go back and watch that again. If I was to give this any rating at a 10, I'm, I'm going to have to go with 7 on this one. Yourself? Uh, I actually think I'm going to agree. I think I'm going stick to a, stick with a 7, even though I'm not sure if I liked it or yeah. not. It, it, it definitely has been thought-provoking. So yeah. for that, I'll give it a 7. And the acting was really, really good in it. Yeah, because one part I'm wondering, because where it is done so low budget, was the acting meant to be... Like a low budget amateur movie. That's one other question I have about this one. Who knows? Because Angelica Houston, like, we're talking Morticia Adams here. Mm. We're talking Royal Tenenbaums. We're talking uh, Life Aquatic, where she is absolutely a fierce character. Right. And this one, she plays a football obsessed mom, but at the same time, it kind of feels like a low budget acting, but maybe that's the genius of it itself. Absolutely. So I, I, I think at least we agree on the number. So <laughs> I think we're pretty much in agreement with this movie. So to let you know what. We've given Dr. Phil. We have assigned Phil the movie Cloudburst. Yes. Cloudburst is definitely one of our favorite movies. and Phil put, right here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And we put a lot of thought into it for Phil. We, we really have gotten to know Phil's personality through talking to him and through his videos. And we both agreed that the story is, and I'm not going to give it away. I'll let him explain it tomorrow. But the stair- story is very pertinent with stuff that's going on in the news right now and has has some relation to Phil's own backstory. So I can, I can kind of... I, I, that's why we picked this movie for him. All right. So that is the end of today. So don't forget, check in with all the other Den Boys, especially Phil Twirl. I want to see what he says about our movie that we picked. So I can't wait for that. Um, like, share, subscribe, and don't forget, we are going to be hashtagging Den Road to 1000. Yeah. Hashtag Den Road to 1000. It'll be, you're going to see the hashtag at the bottom of the video right now. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, That's cute to edit it in, right? That's right. <laughs> okay. Perfect. <Hey. laughs> That's right. All right. All right. So guys, this was your, this was our week. This is our movie review. Tune in and see what the other boys were watching this week. Have a great one. Bye.